It's so dark back there. Here we have a fairly challenging circuit. And it's challenging in the sense that we have a capacitor here and what we want to do is figure out what the voltage across and the current through that capacitor is and then what the voltage and current at a particular time are and then how long it will take to fully charge this circuit. But we don't have it in the standard form where we have a power supply or a voltage source connected to an R, to an R and a C. We've got this arrangement of resistors around the capacitor. So in order to figure out and answer these questions, we need to convert this circuit into our standard format. We need to know what that source voltage is. We need to know what this resistance is. We know what the capacitor is. It's that 40, actually, you know what? I've changed this. I went through and did the calculations with a 2200 microfarad capacitor. So how do we do this? Well, remember how to thevenize a circuit? And that was from a point in the circuit, what is the, what does the voltage source and what do, what's the resistance look like from that particular point? So basically what we're going to do is thevenize the circuit around the capacitor right here. So a number of steps we need to go through to do that. First, we need to figure out what the thevenin equivalent voltage is and what the thevenin equivalent resistance is. And once we've done that, we will have our circuit in this format and we will be able to figure out the voltage, the current over time, as well as voltage and current at a particular time and how long it will take this capacitor to fully charge. Okay, one simplification I can do right off the bat, and that's that combination is 120 ohms. We got two 240 ohm resistors in parallel with each other. When you combine them together to one equivalent circuit, one equivalent resistance, it's 120 ohms. So that makes it a little bit simpler. Uh, now let's, let's, take, let's attack this circuit and figure out what the Thevenin equivalent voltage is. So this is where the capacitor is going to sit, and I need to figure out what the voltage is between those two points. The rest of the circuit connected to this, well, I've got the 48 volt source over here, 360 ohm resistor. We're assuming that the switch is closed, of course. So what is the voltage going to be across there? Well, in this circuit, there's not going to be any current that's flowing through that 60 ohm resistor. So we're basically just looking at the voltage between those two points. So that voltage then will simply be the voltage at 48 volts that gets divided between these two resistors. We're looking at the voltage against the smaller one, the 120 ohm resistor. So the thevenin voltage is 12 volts. Now, what about the thevenin resistance? Well, remember for thevenin resistance, I place an open at the point of interest that's going to be there. I'm going to short voltage sources. So I will have this 360 ohm resistor, but it's going to be shorted. I have a 120 ohm resistor. And then over here, I've got that 60 ohm. So the resistance between these two points it's going to be those two in parallel and then in series with this one. Just look, if I follow path of current, I'm going to do parallel through those and then back and going through that 60 ohm. I've redrawn the Thevenin equivalent circuit that the capacitor sees for from this particular circuit. And now we're in that standard form, so it's pretty easy to figure out what the voltage equation is. It's a charging capacitor, so it's going to be 12 minus 12 e to the negative t over tau. Well, tau, that's an important number to know. R times c, 0 0.33. seconds. And the current, well, that'll be 12 over 150. So there's my two equations for VC of T and IC of T. Now, the, the last two parts of this problem are pretty simple now that I have the equations. VC at 0 0.1 seconds. Well, 0 0.1 seconds is not even one time constant yet, so it's going to go, it'll only have charged up a little bit, but we can plug the numbers in. You get 3.11 volts, and I can do the same thing for the current at 0.1 seconds.
and we get 0 0.059 amps. The time to fully charge. Well, for any circuit, that's at 5 tau. And in this particular case, tau is 0.33 seconds. So 5 times 0 0.33, 1.65 seconds. So after 1.65 seconds, we can consider that this capacitor has been fully charged. Or more accurately, this capacitor has been fully charged because this is the actual circuit. So for this circuit, we figured out the voltage equation and the current equation for the capacitor. And we've also figured out the voltage at 0.1 seconds and the current at 0.1 seconds. Now let's imagine that at 0.1 seconds, we pull out one of these 240 ohm resistors. Well, we're no longer left with an equivalent circuit that looks like this. We need to figure out what that equivalent circuit looks like and determine what's going to happen to the circuit when that resistor gets pulled out. So when that resistor gets pulled out, the equivalent circuit will have the same format, except that the voltage and the resistance, will, we will have new Thevenin equivalents. And I won't go through that process, but basically what we'll then have when, when one of these 240 ohm resistors is pulled out, we'll have 240 ohms there. We'll go through the exact same steps as we did to figure out this equivalent circuit to get a new voltage and a new a Thevenin resistance. So when that gets pulled out, what we end up with is a new Thevenin voltage source that's 19.2 volts. We'll still have the 2200 microfarad capacitor and our new Thevenin resistance, 204 ohms. One other piece of information that we have about this circuit is that the initial voltage on that capacitor is 3.11 volts because we're Remember, I'm pulling out this 240 ohm resistor at 0.1 seconds when that input voltage is at 3.11 volts. Well, now again, we have a charging capacitor circuit with an initial voltage this time. So our new voltage equation, in general, the voltage equation is Vs minus Vs minus the initial voltage times E to the negative T over tau. Now we need to figure out what these values are. Well, this would be 19.2, and then we'll have 19.2 minus 3.11, which gives us 16.09. And we also need to know what tau is. Well, tau is R times C, so this will be 204 ohms times 2200 microfarads. And our new tau is 0 0.45 seconds. So rewriting this equation, filling in the numbers, we get, 19.2 minus 16.09 e to the negative t over 0 0.45. And our new current is Vs minus the initial voltage over R times e to the negative t over 0 0.45 again. Well, Vs minus Vi 16.09 over 204 gives me 0.079 e to the negative 2.2 t. So now that we have the equations, all sorts of things you can do. You can figure out the voltage or the current at a particular point in time. You can figure out how long it'll charge, take to charge up to a certain value. You can figure out how long it's going to take to, to fully charge up to the 19.2 volts. All sorts of things. For this, all I'm going to do to wrap up is um, show you the voltage and current as they're changing over time. And you can see them right here for both the initial conditions and then that instant that things change at 0.1 seconds, you can see the new equations in action. And that's highlighted here on the, on the graphs. If you wanna see more videos about capacitors, check out this playlist here. It has more videos on back to the basics of what capacitors are, how I derive these equations, as well as more practice problems like this one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. And until next time, stay focused, but have fun.